What is going on guys? Fitcher here and welcome back to the Fitcher Career. It is episode number 5 of season 2 and we're here in Baku for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And heading into this round of the championship, Toyota have brought some big, big upgrades to the engine. We're now sort of leapfrogged Renault in the engine department and getting very, very close to Ferrari I'd say. Like, we're not still, we're not quite on the level of Mercedes who are still the best engine on the, on the grid. We're definitely not the worst now. We're better than the BMW engine of course, powering Sauber. And I'd say our engine is now better than the Renault in the back, of course, the Renault car, and of course, Red Bull, and actually Toro Rosso as well. So our engine is quite nice, and thankfully, these upgrades just got here in time for this round of the championship, of course. Azerbaijan having such a long back straight, and of course, because that back straight is so long, I've decided to go with a very, very low downforce setup, so we can try to match those Mercedes-powered cars like the Tyrrell, the McLaren, although I'm not sure we're going to be fighting them because they're up the front of the field, but more importantly, the Williams and the Force India, because they are so damn quick down this back straight, we have to do something to try and match them, otherwise we're just going to get absolutely swamped. But anyway, let's move on to the qualifying results from yesterday's session, and like I was saying, the Mercedes-powered uh, cars will be very, very quick here, and Tyrrell actually locked out the front row of the group with Carlos Sainz. The championship leader, the runaway championship leader, in fact, at this stage of the season, will be starting today's race from pole position, and alongside him, of course, is his teammate, and there was only 28 thousandths of a second separating the two teammates, and Perez actually set the exact same time as Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari, but Perez set it earlier on in Q3, so he gets a start from second, Sebastian Vettel right behind him, and joining Vettel on the second row of the grid is another Mercedes-powered car, of course, uh, Stoffel Van Dorn. In the McLaren, he was only 42 thousandths of a second off pole. That McLaren is lightning, lightning quick here, of course, with the Mercedes engine in the back of the car. Then you got Fernando Alonso, who's done an amazing job to drag that Renault that high up, considering the pace deficit they have down this long back straight. He was uh, just, o uh, just over a tenth and a half off pole position, and he just beat Valtteri Bottas, who, who seems to be struggling a little bit this season. He hasn't been able to find his feet in the McLaren team just yet. Been comfortably outperformed by his teammate so far, and today, again, outperformed by his teammate. He's going to be staying directly behind him two places back, and he was just under two tenths off pole, so a very, very close qualifying session. Then you got Daniel Ricciardo and Antonio Giovinazzi on the fourth row of the grid, and both of them set exactly the same time and exactly two tenths off pole position so a very very close qualifying session here in Azerbaijan then in uh, ninth place you have Max Verstappen he's been out qualified by his teammate and last year's race winner here in Azerbaijan Daniel Ricciardo and then you got Nico Hulkenberg rounding out the top 10 and then in 11th you have myself so again in that sort of best of the rest sit, uh, position and again in a nice position because of the tyre situation we get free choice of tyre for the uh, first car on the grid to get free choice of tyre for the start of the Grand Prix and alongside us is Esteban Ocon in the Force India of course he has the Mercedes engine so he's going to be very very tough to keep behind down the long straights here at Baku. If we look further down the grid in 13th place we have Roman Grosjean in the Williams with Luca Giotto alongside and then Pascal Verlein and the two Toro Rossos with Gasly just getting the upper hand on his teammate then Charles Leclerc will be starting out of 18th place with my teammate Kamui Kobayashi along uh, just behind him on the grid in 19th. Louis Delatraz will start from 20th with Kevin Magnussen in 21st being out qualified by both a Toyota and a BMW Sauber so not a good qualifying performance there from the Danish driver and then Oliver Rowland rounds out the field in his BMW Sauber. So the strategy for today's Azerbaijan Grand Prix is a one stop. We're going to start on the super soft tyres and then swap to the medium tyres, the hardest compound available to us. I think that's going to be the best strategy for us. I do find the hardest compound tyres at most tracks a really nice tyre. I seem to be good at getting life and speed out of those tyres, something that other people seem to struggle with, but I do find them quite nice. So I'm going to try the one stop here in Azerbaijan and it would be nice. Maybe an early race safety car would help us jump onto those uh, medium tires. If there's like a lap one safety car, I might even risk it going straight onto those mediums and trying to get them the full 26 laps to the end. I'm not too sure how that's going to work, but we've got to try it. I don't feel like we have the pace to challenge the 10 in front of us, those uh, top five teams. But, you know, the strategy gives us that opportunity to try and challenge them. But we've got to be aggressive. We've got to try something a little bit risky for it to pay off. So I guess that all depends if there is actually a first lap safety car. But that is the plan. And we're going to put a little bit of extra fuel in the car because, you know, there's a very long back straight here at Baku. And the fuel is a little bit all over the place at this track. Here we go. Engage the clutch. Get the revs up as the lights come on. We've got five lights. 
and it's lights out, and away we go. The Azerbaijan Grand Prix is underway, and Giovinazzi has a shocking start. Further up on the grid is now down towards turn number one, up the inside of Nico Hulkenberg and Max Verstappen. We make that move work all the way up into eighth place is now down towards turn number two. There are cars all over the place further up ahead of us. It looks like Sainz might already tr be trying to make a break for it as we head down the straight down towards turn number three in the slipstream of Daniel Ricciardo onto the brakes. We're just going to be a little bit cautious in the early phase of this race. There are cars all over the place as Ricciardo parks it on the apex of turn number three and I don't think we have damaged our front wings. Alonso and Van Dorn are duking it out up ahead and we've got the run on Daniel Ricciardo up the inside of turn number five, but he's still there. Is now into turn number six. He's given us a little bit of a squeeze into the wall, but we just hold it and we get that move done. As now we head down towards turn number seven and then the infamous turn eight, a ridiculously tight corner, and we should be able to get through here quite nicely as we do. It's quite a nice corner, I will admit. It gets a lot of hate, but I do like it. It's a good challenge with the walls that close, but a good first lap so far, all the way up into seventh place. We've got the two McLarens in front of us, and they are both powered by Mercedes engines are about to come on to the very long back straight, so I think a chance of trying to overtake either of them is very, very unlikely. We did close up a little bit through turn, I think it's number 14, as now through the last real corner, a little wheel spin on the exit, now onto the very, very long straight through the left kink and then through the right kink. Get a very, very close to the wall. Got the run on Bottas to his outside and past Stoffel Van Dorn. What a run. Something must have happened to both of them. We are using rich revs, but still, regardless, that is amazing run as Van Dorn has lost two places as we end the first lap all the way up into fifth places. Now we're on the back of Fernando Alonso, then we've got Sebastian Vettel, Sergio President, looks like I was right, Sainz is already making a break for it as some, oh, Alonso has the issue, that's the car that has an issue and the yellow flags are out for right in front of me, almost caught out there, we had a little knock with Alonso, as now we have Bottas right on our gearbox, that did slow us up a little bit, as now down towards turn three, he's not close enough to try, oh, safety car, safety car, this is what I was talking about. An early race safety car. This is our chance to try something aggressive on the strategy. We've, we've had a good opening couple, uh, opening lap in a bit, and we're already up into fourth place. But I think trying something aggressive could be worthwhile. Pit onto the mediums, go to the end. The original pit lap was lap number nine. The safety cars normally stay up for four laps on this game. So it would be lap six to the end. That's 20 laps compared to 17 laps. Being a bit conservative, I could try and stretch that out, I think. It might just be worth a try, and right now I think Science will be rather pissed off because as you can see, we can't really see him up ahead. He's already had a massive gap considering how far we were into the race, doing a bit on the Sebastian Vettel from his Red Bull time, just bolting at the start of the race, but I think I'm going to try it. I think I'm going to go for the early pit stop and go onto the mediums and then aim to go to the end of the race. If we can't get to the end, we can bolt on some new super softs or something right near the end, but I think it is worth a try. I really do. Here we go, end of lap two, and we're peeling off into the pit lane. We're going to try this aggressive strategy. We just got to stop for the line. Holy crap, that was close to the pit limiter, and we don't get a drive-through penalty, thankfully. That is what you call cutting it fine on pit entrance. Nailed it, really. A double lock-up, but that doesn't matter. We're getting rid of these tires anyway, and on go the medium tires, and we're going to be going to the end of this race. We have dropped all the way back to the back of the field, with Max Verstappen actually, so he's had some sort of issue right at the start of this race. He was just in front of us on the grid and now he is back here with us and it looks like the only car behind us is actually Fernando Alonso of course who has issues. He's still on the pit straight looking at the mini map so he must have some serious issues. I'm not too sure what happened, possibly a puncture or something, but that would be strange that early on in the Grand Prix. I'm not too sure. I might show a replay of something, or it could just be an engine problem. I really don't know, but regardless, we're in P21 on medium tires, and the plan is to go to the end of the Grand Prix from here. Here we go. End of lap number five, and the safety car is coming in on this lap. We've saved up a lot of fuel, 2.5 extra laps of fuel now thanks to this long safety car period now tires aren't too worn either as you're about to get back to green flag racing here in Azerbaijan so we're actually pushing it a little bit just to catch back up to the train I will say these safety car restarts are a little bit odd further back in the pack as now we're all going to suddenly check up 
as we get to the back of this train. We're about to go back, back to green flag racing. A massive frame rate drop there as we're about to go. It's been a terrible restart for me. Or has it? Yeah, there we go. Green flag, green flag. Oh, we've actually got a nice run. That frame rate drop has helped us slightly. It's up the inside of Verstappen. Now up the inside of Kobayashi. Onto the brakes for turn number one. Possibly up the inside of Leclerc. Not quite. But we also get past Oliver Rowland. So that turned out to be a very good restart. By not catching up to the train in time, we got a brilliant run onto that back straight as now. We've got Charles Leclerc in front of us. Now, I need to be really careful on the tyres, especially out of the corners. I know at this track, it's the rears that take the most punishment, getting on the power and spinning them up. So I need to be very careful powering out of the corners. Other than that, I'm, I think I can get these tyres to the end. I wouldn't have gone for this strategy if I didn't think I could get them to the end as we are sitting in 18th place behind the Haas of Charles Leclerc. Then it's Pierre Gasly just in front of him. We just need to be patient right now. We don't want to try anything stupid and damage our car. We're in this for the long run. Through the last real corner here in Baku and onto the long back DRS straight. Of course no DRS because we just had a safety car period but through the fast left and the fast right. Almost getting to the wall on the outside a fair bit of understeer in the slipstream of Leclerc into Rich Revs of Science. Sets the fastest lap of the race. It looks like he's already breaking away yet again. We're going to go up the inside of Charles Leclerc down into turn number one. Careful of Pierre Gasly as Verline and Delatraz are fighting up ahead. Verline's been forced out wide by Magnussen. Can we use this to slip up the inside of Pierre Gasly? Yes, we can. And up into 16th place now as now we have the Williams of Pascal Verline in front of us. That's Kevin Magnussen. Delatraz is everyone starting to slow down a little bit. Someone at the front of this train going a little bit slowly as possible. Possibly a Ferrari. I can see that seems to be slowing down this train. I'm not too sure. We need to, need to try to clear them really, really quickly because we don't want to lose too much time back here. As it seems to be picking up the pace a little bit, but it just seemed a bit slow. Here we go, in the slipstream of Pascal Verline. Can we try it up the inside, down into turn number one, and up the inside of Kevin Magnussen. What a move late on the brakes, and I've got that move done now. Into 14th place is up next. We have Louis Delatraz in the BMW Sabres. Hulkenberg has gone for a spin. There are cars all over the place. Please don't. Oh, it's giving me illegal overtakes. I knew it would. I was hoping it wouldn't there. We have made up a couple positions on Kvyat as well, who's now trying to retake us down the outside. We're going to go back up his inside into turn number three. Squeeze him out on the exit. We spin the rears a little bit, and we get that move done. As now we have Grosjean and Luca Giotto in front of us. I'm not too sure what happened to Nico Hulkenberg, but he went for a spin. I couldn't quite see who he got tangled up with, but now on the back of Roman Grosjean and Luca Giotto. How is our tire? We're looking only 9% on the rear, so it's not too bad at this stage. Oh, Grosjean and Giotto are going for it in front of us as Giotto gets hung out to dry and we get the move up his out, inside on the exit, outside for the next corner. We get that done now into ninth place. We've got Roman Grosjean in the Williams directly in front of us. It's going to be difficult to pass Grosjean because he has the Mercedes engine in the back of that car and that Mercedes engine is lightning quick down the pit straight and of course that is the main place to overtake here at Baku. Down towards the last real corner on the track, out of there, onto the power. Now it's full throttle all the way down the pit straight. We're in the slipstream of Roman Grosjean. We've got the car in rich revs and we're going to have DRS, although I'm not sure. We're actually going to need DRS alongside Grosjean and we get the move done and now we open the DRS flap and of course he does not get it. An easy move on Grosjean now up into 8th place. Make that 7th as someone was in the pit lane. And now up next, we have Daniel Ricciardo on super soft tyres in front of us. Oh, Pierre Gasly is out of the race. Something has happened to him. It looks like down the pit straight. It looks like there's been a big crash on the pit straight. I'm not too sure what has happened, but somehow the Toro Rosso driver is out of the race. And while it's busy looking at the mini map, I went a little bit deep into turn number 3. Is this going to give Grosjean a chance to pass. There is no really pa uh, real passing opportunities around this section of the track, so we should be fine. Virtual oh, virtual safety car. We have a virtual safety car. I'm not too sure what that is for. I think there are still cars stranded, possibly on the pit straight. I'm not too sure, but the VSC is out, and you can see Grosjean is right on my rear bumper, and I've got a two seconds in the Delta, so I can speed up a little bit for now. Oh, it looks like a few cars have pitted under the virtual safety car, including 
Carlos Sainz, who has come out on soft tyres, and he was originally on super, uh, super soft, so I think he must be going for that two-stop strategy, super softs and supers again if he's gone onto the uh, soft tyres, so I'm not sure he is going to be able to make it to the end of the race from here, and we are now up into fourth place. Up next, we have Esteban Ocon, so Ricardo, who is in front of me on track, must have pitted as well. Through the fast left and through the fast right, we have Carlos Sainz right on our gearboxes now onto the DRS. He's going to get DRS any second now. The flap will be open on that Tyrrell as he heads down our outside as we head towards turn number one. Leaving the space is now hard on the brake pedal for the first corner. We've got the inside line. Give him a little bit of a squeeze and we hold on to what is now second place as the, a few other cars have pitted. Esteban Ocon has taken the lead of this Azerbaijan Grand Prix for Force India but now onto the second DRS straight. Science will have the run. We're going to defend the inside line as we head down towards turn number three. Hard on the brakes. He's going to try it right around our outside. He's turned in on us a little bit. A little bit of contact there. We hold on to the cars now. He has the inside line right around the outside of the uh, uh, Tyrrell. I was about to say Toro Rosso. And it looks like we have held on to the position for now, which is second place in this Grand Prix. Ocon is undoubtedly going to pit against. He's on super soft tyres. We're on mediums and we're hoping to go to the end of this Grand Prix. So we are sitting in a very nice place right now, except we've got Tyrrell breathing down our neck, the championship leader, the fastest car on the track, which is making it a little bit uncomfortable. Here comes Carlos Sainz again. We're on to the DRS straight yet again. And Grosjean is trying to get a piece of this. We're going to be three wide as we head down the pit straight. We're going to lose two positions here. I think no, Sainz has backed out of it. And Grosjean has jumped all the way up into second place as we head down towards turn number one. And Grosjean now has the lead as Ocon has made his pit stop. We've got Carlos Sainz right behind us is now down into turn number two. A little bit of a lockup. That could just hurt our, uh, our run out of here. And because we only have one detection point here in Baku, Grosjean gets DRS again. And I do not. Is now down towards turn number three. I don't think Sainz is close enough to challenge us. And we just need to keep in touch with the back of that Gro uh, Williams car driven by Roman Grosjean. Now on to the DRS straight up into Rich Rams. We are going to get DRS from Grosjean to help us defend. We've got Carlos Sainz right behind us, but I don't think he's going to be able to uh, challenge us as we have DRS off the Williams of Roman Grosjean. is down into turn number one. No of damage. Our front wing is Grosjean absolutely parking the bus into the first corner. He was going so, so, so slowly. I thought I left him enough space. I broke earlier than I normally do to give him a little bit of extra uh, space. And he absolutely parked it on the first corner. And now we have yellow front wing as Grosjean and Sainz are going for it further back in the pack as I almost missed my braking zone there into turn number three. And this is going to be difficult from here with front wing damage, especially those fast kinks on the back straight with uh, front wing damage and old medium tires are going to be very uh, interesting, let's say. Oh, Louis Delatraz is out of this race is now through the fast left and right. We can just keep our foot buried there. I was worried with the front wing damage. It might make that section a little bit tricky. Is any safety car going to come out for Delatraz? No, it is not as Grosjean is going up our outside as we head down towards turn number one. Hard on the brakes. We've got the inside line, so we should be able to hold on to the lead. Give him a squeeze on the exit. And we do, in fact, hold on to the lead of this race as Ricardo sets the fastest lap. Oh, Valtteri Bottas is now out of this race, and he was not that far behind us. And looking at the minimap, it's caused a little bit of chaos. Further back in the pack is any safety car or virtual safety car going to come out for that. It doesn't look like it is. So two retirements in quick successions. No, we've gone deep. A massive lockup. It's too busy commentating and looking at the minimap as Grosjean has spun on my rear as I was coming back onto the track. I'm not too sure what Grosjean was doing. I had to go somewhere. Otherwise, I would be in the wall and would make contact with the Williams. And he is rounded in the wall. And now Verline is up onto the third step on the podium. Things are absolutely kicking off here on lap 15 of this Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Surely this should be a safety car. Uh, two cars out of this race and Grosjean circula circulating at very slow speed with no front wing but it doesn't look like 
it is going to be surprisingly enough not even a virtual safety car it would have been nice to help our tire which is up to 34 percent so by my calculations considering how many laps we've done on these tires by the end of the race they're going to be around 70 75 percent mark and that over 75 percent is when you start to risk a puncture we had to have a slight little lift through that fast right hander and that has given carlos Sainz a run as we head on to the long Hit straight here. Science is pulling to our outside. He has the DRS flap open. We're gonna have the inside line for turn number one. In fact, he's actually backed out of the moves now onto the brakes for the first corner. He's backed out of it for now. But now uh, coming up to uh, turn after turn number two, I should say. I'm forgetting how to speak here. Now we're on to another DRS straight where Science has another chance to try and take the lead away from us in this Azerbaijan Grand Prix. He's going to the inside. We're trying to edge him as far to the inside as we possibly can, but there's not more, much more that we can do down into turn number three. And he's got that move done, and Science takes the lead of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. We go a little bit deep into that corner. Yes, again, it's the one corner I struggle with on this track. It's really hard to pick out your breaking point for, I find. Most of the other corners have some clear marker that I can use, but just not that corner onto the DRS straight and you can just see how much science has pulled away in half a lap and now we have to deal with science's teammate Sergio Perez and the McLaren of Stoffel van Dorn but they're not going to be close enough on this lap is down into turn number one we hold on to second place but all these cars appear to be on soft tires so they're gonna have to pit again so I still think we're in a good place in this Grand Prix with less than 10 laps to go now Onto the DRS straight we go and Stoffel van Dorn is already pulling alongside us. We've got Perez right in our slipstream. He swaps to Van Dorn's slipstream. We go down the pit straight. We're going to dunk back into the slipstream of Stoffel van Dorn. Can we try it back up the inside down into turn number one? Yes, we can. Late on the brakes. Squeeze out the Belgian. No, there's contact between me and Van Dorn. I thought I was just clear of him. That was very bad by me. And Perez has slipped through into second place but up into rich refs he is gonna have drs there's not too much i can do right now and i feel bad i just squeezed out van dorn a little bit too much but i just got out of it before we both went sailing off into the wall i've done it a few times where they've been on my outside and i've been able to squeeze them out on the exit and they haven't held it on the exit but this time van dorn just kept the nose in that was probably my fault giving a bit too much of a squeeze but hasn't hurt us too badly except van dorn and myself have both lost one place to Sergio present. I'm going to let Van Dorn through. I feel bad. I do feel bad about that. And I am really slowing them down. It's now down towards turn number seven. That is, as we're just getting in the wall slightly. Things are all coming undone for us right now. I'm making a whole heap of mistakes. We just need to keep our cool. This is only our fifth Grand Prix, remember. We just need to keep our cool. Now we have the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo right on our gearbox. We have eight laps to go here. And we are going to the end of this race i'm not too sure how our tires are looking it's going to be very touch and go to if we can make it to the end of this race let's just have a quick look 44 percent on that left rear that is going to be very very difficult to nurse all the way through to the end of this race without getting a puncture unless we get lucky and we don't get a puncture right on 75 percent like we do sometimes as now through the fast left and right a little bit of under series now ricardo is right on our gearbox he's pulling to our inside and Esteban Ocon has gone and taken the power of us he pulls up the inside of Ricardo then to my outside a great move there by the young Frenchman can we try it back up the inside of turn number one no no he's locked up no he's Ocon has locked up he was parking the bus on the apex there is now down towards turn number two we're on the inside Ocon tries to go right around the outside Ocon's having flashbacks of what happened here last year when he went side by side with the car through turn two but he managed to get through there successfully on this lap can we try it up the inside of Esteban Ocon no we're just a little bit too far back at this edge you gotta remember these cars are on soft tires and I'm expecting them to pit again I'm not sure if they definitely will but with eight laps to go they've already been on these uh, seven laps to go I should say they've already been on these tires for a fair few laps I doubt they'll make it to the end oh that was very close to that outside wall is now on to the DRS straight we've got Daniel Ricciardo right in our slipstream we've just dropped out of DRS range to Esteban Ocon I'm guessing as we don't have DRS but Ricciardo has dropped back and we can return to the racing line for turn number one as we start lap 20 of 26 here in our tires and now up to 48 percent on that rear left we really need to think about nursing that tire now for the next six laps
Here we go. Onto the DRS straight. We've got Ricardo right behind us. He pulls to our outside. He doesn't seem to have the straight line speed to be able to get past us when we chuck it up into Rich Rev. So that is interesting. The Renault struggling with uh, straight line speed here in Baku as we start lap number 21 of 26. And how are our tyres going? Let's have a quick check. Chuck the car into Rich first. Check the tyres. 51% and 50%. This is going to be very very touch and go to if we get to the end of this race. Now Ricardo is going for it up our inside down into turn number three. I'm not going to try too hard to get back past because I don't want to stress those rear tyres too much. We're about to start the third last lap here in back on our tyres. are on 58% on the rears. I think I can get them home from here, but I don't think any of the cars in front of us are actually going to make a pit stop which does surprise me a little bit they must be going for the one stop going supers and then straight onto soft tires which i didn't think would be possible but clearly it is i guess the strategy i was given right at the start of the race wasn't the most accurate but now we have the williams on pascal verline behind us and he is on super soft tires he's going to be reeling us in very very quickly while we nurse these tires to the end here comes Pascal Verline down the DRS stroke. We've changed up into Rich Revs. He's got DRS. He's got the outside line. We're going to duck back into his slipstream and try it. Up the inside, down into turn number one. Very late on the brakes. Try to give him a squeeze on the exit, which we do so successfully this time. He doesn't keep his nose in there. And we get the positioners now. We have to do it all again onto the second DRS straight as now. We head down towards turn number three. We've got the car in Rich Revs and hopefully that'll be enough as we jump onto the brakes for turn number three. He hasn't tried it and we hold on to the position for now with only two laps to go here in Azerbaijan. Here we go again onto the long DRS straight here in Azerbaijan. Verline to our outside. Kvyat, I think that is, to our inside. We are three wide down. The back straight. Kvyat gets the move done. We're going to dump back into the slipstream of the Toro Rosso. Back up his inside down into turn number one. Try. We'll actually leave him a bit of space. He is a fair way up. Our outside is now down towards turn number two. He's still on our outside into turn number two. And now onto the DRS straight again. We hold onto sixth place with both of them. We'll have DRS. We defend the inside line. Kvyat to our outside. And Verline is going to go right down the middle. Oh, no, no, no. We've gone too deep. No, no. We've just gone too deep down into turn number three. I was looking right over to the right-hand side of the track for the brake boards. I just got them a little bit wrong. and We uh, went straight into the wall. A rookie mistake here. It's so easy to do, though, down at turn three. It's such a long straight, and it's so difficult to pick out your braking zone, especially when you're focusing on two other cars going side by side with you and you're right on the inside and the brake boards are right on the outside. Now we have Verstappen right on our rear end as we have half a lap to go here. In Baku is now up to turn eight. We're going to have to be so, so careful we survive that. Now the next real challenge, these fast left-handers even. Okay, that left-hander, I go in a little bit too hot there. Our tires are up to 66%, so we have got the tires to last all the way to the end of the race. Very, very close to that outside wall. Is now down to this tricky left hander. Carlos Sainz wins yet again. That man is just running away with the championship right now. Now down to the last real corner, but this isn't the last real corner for us. These two kinks are going to be very, very difficult for us. We've got the left hand one first, which is a little bit easier through the left hand kink and now through the right no 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 we just keep it out of that wall as now we have Verstappen right on our gearbox we're going to defend from the Dutchman do everything oh he's put he's put us in the wall Wait. fabulous our race is done our race is done on the last straight we're out of the Grand Prix we could have got two points there but no we didn't quite get two points at all let's have a look at what happened we moved through that right hander and then we, oh, I've, I've moved on him, haven't I? I did move on him a little bit, didn't I? Let's have another look at this. From Verstappen's point of view, let me get on board. Let me find the right camera first. Jeez. On board with Verstappen. Oh, I don't know. There was a gap there, but he hasn't gone fully into that gap. And then he's turned back. So maybe... And then he's put me into the wall and he's continued on. Or did I make two moves? Let's have a look. We come, we come out of this kink and I hold it to the middle here. And then we're going, then I move to the left a little bit, not much. You can just sort of look at the road markings. I'm in this sort of second lane. I, I veer across, 
and I'm veering into this wall. I'm continuing on that path just to cover off that line slowly. Verstappen's gone for that gap, then realized it's closing, gone back to the right, clipped our rear wing, and into the wall we went and out of the Grand Prix. That close to the finish line, you can pretty much see it from here. That's, that's a disappointing end. Let me know what you think of that incident. I've sort of tried to dissect it a little bit there for you guys, but let me know whose fault you think that was. I, I don't really care too much. We're out of the Grand Prix. We missed out on those final two points. But so be it. That race was going well, but we got the strategy wrong. I genuinely thought those guys were going to go for a two-stop. Let me just retire from the race now. Yes, we do want to retire from the session, unfortunately, here in Baku. So close to the end of the Grand Prix, and it all came undone on the final pit straight. Not how we wanted the, our first race, our first Grand Prix in Baku to go, but so be it. Not much we can do about that. Unfortunate end. It was a scrappy race from myself. A few different incidents, damage to the front wing, pushing those tires to the absolute limit, and then things just coming unstuck there right at the end. So Carlos Sainz has gone and won yet another Grand Prix by winning here in Azerbaijan. And he actually led home a Tyrrell 1-2 with Sergio Perez just behind him six seconds back. And then you got Stoffel Van Dorn standing on the final step of the podium. Then you got Esteban Ocon finishing in fourth place. A brilliant result there for the young Frenchman just missing out on the podium by two and a bit seconds back off Stoffel Van Dorn, but nonetheless, a great result there for both Ocon and the Force India team. Then you got Daniel Ricciardo finishing in fifth place, Pascal Verlein in sixth, then you got Daniel Kvyat in seventh, Luca Giotto in eighth, Max Verstappen, of course, finishing in ninth place. Of course, that would have been us if it wasn't for that last lap incident. Then you got Kevin Magnussen rounding out the points. It's interesting, just to have a look, you got a fair few of the not main five teams getting in the points which is a bit unusual. You got Esteban Ocon in fourth. You got Verline from Williams in sixth. Then you got the Toro Rosso in seventh. Giotto in eighth. And then you got Kevin Magnussen getting all the way up into 10th place after starting our 21st place. A great drive there from Kevin Magnussen. Just looking at the stops, I was right. All those guys did end up doing a one-stop strategy. If I'd known you could have gone for the supers and then onto the softs, I would have done that. But when I saw the strategy at the start, you would have seen it too. It didn't really look like a one-stop without using the medium tires was actually an option here in Baku. I guess that's just unfortunate. The strategy wasn't quite right from the team, but we didn't finish the race in the end, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. We could have scored two points, but it was not to be with that last corner, uh, not even last corner, last straight incident with Max Verstappen. Then you got uh, Kevin Max, I already mentioned. Then outside the points, you have our teammate Kamui Kobayashi finishing in 11th place just outside the points. That's Oliver Rowland in 12th and Charles Leclerc in 13th place. Then you got Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari finishing all the way down in 14th place. Roman Grosjean, of course, he had an incident with us where we went a bit deep into the corner. Coming back onto the track, he sort of come into our side pod. From when, I, from when it actually happened from memory, I haven't looked back on it. It seemed like Grosjean... I don't know, he didn't really give me anywhere to go other than in the wall. I wasn't going to go down the escape road. I could, I kept it on the track and out of the wall, so I'm not too sure what Grosjean was thinking. Then you got Giovinazzi in 16th place. Something must have happened to Gio as well. Then you got the two Renaults, Hulkenberg in 17th and Alonso in 18th. I'm not too sure what happened to those. Oh, Hulkenberg was spun at one stage in the race, of course. Alonso, Alonso had the in, uh, issue early on in the Grand Prix. Then you got myself, Bottas, Delatraz, and Gasly, who all did not finish the race. After the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, Carlos Sainz holds a very comfortable lead in the Drivers' Championship. 48 points, to be exact, over Stoffel Van Dorn in second place. Then you have myself sitting in third place with 45 points. My fellow Aussie, Daniel Ricciardo, just behind me, two points back on 43. Then you have Fernando Alonso in fifth place, only two points behind Ricciardo on 41, with his teammate right behind him, only one point back. Then you have Sergio Perez in seventh place on 36 points. Of course, teammate to the championship leader, Carlos Sainz. No one predicted this at the start of the season, and Sergio Perez will be hoping to turn his form around ASAP. In 8th place is Antonio Giovinazzi with 24 points, the exact same amount of points as Valtteri Bottas. Both Giovinazzi and Bottas have struggled to find their feet in their new homes, Ferrari and McLaren respectively. Then you've got Max Verstappen rounding out the top 10 with 18 points, a very difficult start to the, se uh, to the season for the teenage sensation. 
in the Constructors Championship after a 1-2 finish here in Azerbaijan. Tyrrell are starting to run away with things with 144 points. In second place is McLaren with 84 points, a very, very long way back off Tyrrell, 60 points to be exact. Then you have Renault, only three points back. So the battle for second between McLaren and Renault in the Constructors standings is very, very close. Then you have Red Bull, a further 20 points back off, Red, uh, off Renault, I should say, in fourth place with 61 points. And there's Toyota sitting in fifth place with 45 points. Ferrari still having a difficult season down in sixth place. Only 30 points to their name. A very un Ferrari ish season here in 2018. Then you have Force India sitting in 17th place. The best of the rest with Williams just behind them in 8th place. And it looks like Force India have the upper hand in that battle between the two independent Mercedes powered teams. They have a 12 point lead over Williams. Then you have Toro Rosso in 9th place on 9 points. Haas in 10th place on 6 points. Then BMW Sauber rounding out the points with one single point. Well, that was a very interesting race. Definitely a, a difficult race for ourselves. Probably our worst race of the season. A lot of mistakes in there and then make a uh, DNFing from the race with that incident with Verstappen with no corners at all to go. All we had to do was keep the car straight with our foot planted on the throttle and we couldn't do that. We got spun by Verstappen. A disappointing race but we're hoping to bounce back next week out when we head to Austria but that is going to do it for today guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have make sure to smash that like button. If you are new to the channel make sure you do subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been X and I'll see you all next time.